And welcome back to Anton Math. Now, we just did a kind of an introduction video for two-dimensional vectors, and that leads us into this video where we talk about vector arithmetic. Now, I'm not going to be going over kind of the rules of actually proceeding with vector arithmetic like we're going to normally do. We're going to develop that in the next couple of videos, uh, but just to give an idea of what we mean geometrically when we talk about these different types of vector arithmetic. So first, let's talk about addition. When we add two vectors, what we mean by that is if I have some vector u, let's say this is my vector u here, and I'm adding that to some vector v, the way we do that is we're saying first we take the displacement of u, then we take the displacement of v, and the total resulting displacement after these two displacements occur is the sum u plus v. So let me document that. If this is my vector u down here, this is my vector v, we line them up tail to end, or let me say uh, front to back, and this resultant displacement is our sum u plus v. Now there's another way to draw this. Instead of drawing u and then v, sometimes we'll draw um, let me see if I can make these look the same. Let's say this is my u, and I draw v with um, with the same vertex or the same initial point. So I have my u down here. And then up here, this is my v. Uh, we could also think of the sum as if we kind of fill this in into like a rhombus shape. So let me fill this in. I have these two parallel lines to what I've drawn to create this rhombus. Then the sum of u is going to be the diagonal of this rhombus, the sum of u and v. All right, so this line in here, this is going to be u plus v. So sometimes you'll see it drawn like this. We really haven't done anything differently um, because if I drew these two lines on the sides, or if I drew this line on the right side parallel to v, then this is also v, isn't it? If I just draw a little arrow up here. And if I drew this line on top parallel to u, this is really u up here. So the bottom half of this rhombus is the shape that we drew originally. We're looking at this resultant displacement after we take this object and move it with the vector u, and then afterwards move it with the vector v. But this is the geometric idea of vector addition. And again, uh, we'll develop some other ideas on how to write vectors in a way that helps us to do this um, addition process very easily in terms of numbers and actual uh, real vectors, but this is just kind of a geometric idea of what's going on. Now subtraction is similar. We can think of subtraction as addition, but I'm, if I have u minus v, I'm really adding the vectors u and negative v. So let's say I have this vector u. We'll just see if I can freehand these. And I have this vector v. u minus v is going to be this connecting vector from the tip of v to the tip of u, or from the terminal point of v to the terminal point of u, to be a little more precise. This is u minus v. Now the reason this is u minus v is if I, again, if I fill this in as kind of a rhombus, I draw some parallel line here going to be my u. I draw another parallel line here to create this rhombus. This line here is negative v. And this line up here is u. So what we're really doing is we're looking at the resultant displacement if I displace by u and then displace by negative v. That gives me a total displacement of this u minus v. Now we see here minus v is just the vector v in exactly the opposite direction. That's how we're going to use plus and minus here. Kind of like when we had polar coordinates, if we had a negative r, that meant I was traveling a total distance of r, but in the opposite direction of whatever my angle theta was. That same idea applies here to vectors as well. We use negatives to denote a negative direction from where v would normally be going. Okay, so let's see some more examples of this negative v, but with some different scalars. This is our third type of vector arithmetic, and that's multiplication by a real scalar, c. So here, c is a real number, 
and I'm multiplying it to some vector u. So let me draw some of these out. Let's say this is my vector u. And if I drew a vector that was in the same direction as u, but the distance was only one half of the way of what u did, we would call this one half u. In other words, I'm multiplying the vector by the real scalar one half, and what I get is a vector that goes in the same direction as u, but the magnitude is only half of what the magnitude of u was. Now I could multiply by a number greater than one as well. Let's say I multiply by two. So this is, let's say this is twice as long as my original vector u. We would call this 2u. Again, it would be in the same direction as u, but I would have twice the magnitude. Now multiplying by negatives just gives us a different direction. So if I had this vector with the same magnitude as u, no, that's not quite the same magnitude, is it? The same magnitude as u, but was in exactly the opposite direction, we would call this negative u. Or in other words, if I multiply u by negative 1, I get a vector with the same magnitude as u, but in the opposite direction. And we could have some other numbers other than 1 as well. If this was my 1 half u over here that we had, then this vector with the same magnitude as 1 half u, but in the opposite direction, this would be negative 1 half u. Okay, so when we multiply by different real scalars, what that real scalar does is it affects the magnitude, and if it's a negative scalar, it turns it into a complete opposite direction, or 180 degree change in that direction of the, ve of, of the vector. But multiplying by a scalar, and this is very important, multiplying a vector by a scalar will never change the angle or the direction. It may change it to be exactly the opposite direction, um, but I'm never going to multiply u by some scalar to get a vector that looks like this. Right? There's no real scalar that I can multiply u by to get a vector pointing in a completely different direction. Okay? It only changes the actual magnitude, or it does a 180 degree change in the direction. All right, now in the next video, we're going to look at writing these vectors in a component form based on breaking down their magnitude and direction into what we call components. And with that, we're going to be able to take these different arithmetics and actually do them out on paper when we're given particular vectors. We'll see you in the next video.